Hey y'all, Gord on a weedless weedy weekend, number 55, 55, that's what I am, 55 and still alive. It's Weedy Weekend 55, brought to you by the Hurtin' Hippie. Anyways, doing my best to stay positive today. It's kind of a gloomy day in Calgary and a gloomy day in the Birch household. We had a tough morning, but we're getting through it, thanks to friends. Remember that as we move along. Always remember the smiles you have could be enjoyed by other people because you have some in reserve. It's a weedless weedy weekend. However, I do have can of tea, uh, can of honey in my tea, I should say. But other than that, weedless because Pasha's here. It's just me and Pasha. Gord's gone to go get some groceries. Let's start with story number one. And this one was brought to me by one of you who follow. I uh, can't remember which one. I'm really sorry about that. <coughs> <coughs> oh boy. <clears throat> Tea going down. <clears throat> the wrong way. <sighs> Strong. Anyways. <clears throat> first brought to me by a user who said hey all the dispensaries in Ontario got shut down okay I went back and said okay great I love you guys sharing stuff with me just be careful how you interpret them read them first careful how you say that because it, that wasn't the story let's get real and let's so that we can attack it properly because it's a good story and I'm glad you brought it to me Toronto pot outlets ordered to shutter in three days. It's the same sort of thing that happened last summer in Vancouver. Raids on dispensaries. Uh, but it is not all of Ontario. It's Toronto City. It's the, the city itself telling shop landlords to shutter any businesses that are working at their retail outlets that sell pot. This is kind of... I understand the move, and I'm going to attach below two links. One is thestar.com. The other is healthcannabis.org. Health Cannabis does a little better background of this crackdown. And, uh, you know, they even say in there, the letters are designed to remind them what their obligations are under the law and suggest possible consequences, Toronto Police Service spokesman Mark Pagesh said on Wednesday. He wasn't prepared to say how many letters were issued, but Toronto currently has more than 100 marijuana storefronts, surpassing Vancouver as the cannabis capital of Canada. So we know that this is... We don't know. I assume that this is, and it is suggested in both these articles, driven by the LPs, by Tweed, by Tilray, by, by a few others that are doing their best to get rid of competition prior to the switch of laws that may allow that competition to stay in business. If they can get rid of the business prior to these laws changing, then those people may not be able to come back. You know, it truly, truly, somebody like Trudeau, I said this last year when it wasn't Trudeau. Uh, I said this when there was crackdowns in Vancouver. Laws are changing, and when laws are changing, the current laws should be on stasis. There shouldn't be new arrests unless they're egregious extensions beyond reality. A regular dispensary with medical patients should not be shut down because the MMPR and MMAR regulations will change, giving better access, possibly allowing those storefronts to be fully legal. They are legal in the fact that they have a business license. They were authorized by the local municipality. Yes, that local municipality is now shutting them down. That's their choice. 
But do they do it to their own chagrin? That's my warning to those people out there and the Tweed and Tilrays that are doing this. It's too obvious what you're doing. I mean, having, you're actually, I can say this to all, to whoever might be listening, <laughs> but I know that I have a couple of Tweed trolls following me just to try and debunk what I say, but all they do is put down what I say. They have no information. So it's very obvious where this drive comes from, but somebody like Trudeau, our Prime Minister, or the Premier of Ontario should be stepping in and saying, look, hold back. Let's not stop businesses. Sure, if the business is selling totally recreational, not checking if people have prescriptions, stuff like that, that is egregious. That's wrong. That under the current structure, that was never allowed. And those are people trying to get a foot in the door before the doors even open this next year. I think that 2017 will likely be able to sell recreational. You can't right now. And those businesses, I would agree with shutting them down. They should have never been given a license in the first place if they aren't serving medical patients. But these letters in Toronto went out to both. The ones that are opening precursor legalization and the ones that have already been opened and are only supplying to people of the MMA RMPR program. That's the gray market and the gray market should stay open. Black market, yes, storefronts that are selling directly to people without medical prescription should not be allowed. Not yet, not yet. We have to see what the new regulations are. If there's gray areas in those regulations, then by all means, business is supposed to take advantage of loopholes in law because they were always created for the big corporations to take advantage of. So little ones should. So I don't, I am not against gray. I'm against black. That's two stories will be below Toronto dispensaries. Today was the deadline. That was three days ago that they were given it. So likely tomorrow, Monday, you know, Monday's a civic holiday across Canada. Likely Tuesday, we will hear more on whether they're truly going to, are they going to start raiding these? Are they going to shut them down? Or are they going to use some common sense and pull back a bit? We'll wait and see. And since Let's take a break to cheers to that. I'll cheers with my tea. You cheers with whatever you got. And let's just keep that in mind. That's our ongoing battle as advocates for this plant. Free the plant. The next is a link to T-Town Tim, a good friend of mine, a guy down in Tacoma, Washington, who has put together a sort of beginner's introduction to the endocannabinoid system, part one. Great time for you to check out his videos. Great time for you to learn more about the endocannabinoid systems we have. It's new. We're learning so much more every single day. This is a great video. I learned from it too. So check it out. Check it out. Peace. Next story. Okay, the next story is called The Successful Six Double Blind Peer Reviewed Studies Demonstrate Marijuana's Medicine. Now what this is is a list of six double blind peer reviewed studies the type of science we expect that have been done on marijuana in six different areas to prove its efficacy as a medicine. I won't go through all six what I will suggest is that you go through all six. If you know anybody attached to any one of those six that don't believe it's a medicine for that, send it to them. I will read this. Marijuana research is published almost daily dispelling the federal government's hyperbolic assertion that marijuana is highly addictive substance lacking in medicinal efficacy. 
Unfortunately for most, the majority of these valuable research abstracts appear in relatively obscure peer-reviewed journals, flying under the radar of mainstream media and remaining hidden from the general public. This is not helpful. And that is why Marijuana.com brings this story forward in their blog of six different studies that prove that in six different areas, it's a medicine. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts. And it does talk about your butt. Irritable bowel syndrome. We will now move on to the next story that really upsets me. Gotta have, gotta have a cheers, though. I have a lot of anxiety today. Sure could use some medicine. Okay. CannabisCanada.ca brings this. And Cannabis Canada, a uh, fantastic source for, for news in the cannabis world in Canada. This story is Calgary Police Chief, ex-police chief, says legalization won't lead to less addiction. Uh, it's so ridiculous when cops or ex-cops come forward with their obvious bias and spew misinformation. Quoting, he says, legalizing cannabis won't lead to less addiction and the criminal gangs will continue to profit and get people hooked. Hooked. <laughs> ones with education, now I'm quoting him, ones with education, you know, getting kids at the right time so they can give them the facts to make the right decision but also recognizing that events happen with people when they become alcoholics or addicted and the services have to be there to get them out of that same situation where they're desirous of doing that, of getting out, Hansen says. That made very little sense. Don't, re don't rewind it and keep playing it because I can make no sense of it. Except for the fact that he now heads up an, an addiction center. And maybe he's afraid that there'll be less addicts and he'll make less money. So he's trying to say, don't legalize it. I'll just look after the people when they're sick. What a ridiculous guy. The biases are so obvious nowadays that they're like flat earth people. It's so obvious to pick out the people. Like Tim, T-Town T Tim said it best is if they don't believe the information that's out there on marijuana today. They're either stupid or they're assholes. That's it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Marijuana Times brings a story about the House has decided against studying marijuana. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. Just another one. I'll share it below where... Uh, I'm trying to figure out where, but uh, the United States House Rules Committee decided not to allow three different pro proposals pertaining to medical marijuana to reach the House floor for a vote. Didn't even make, make it for a vote. Should have made it for a vote because these studies were important. That's the thing. They don't want studies that report on the benefits. I'm going to quote the story. Medical marijuana is a possible and likely way to reduce opioid prescription painkiller abuse for chronic pain. And unfortunately, it's hardly been explored due to the government policy, in large part because of the federal government's monopoly on legal cultivation and studies. Monopolies and the government. So again, we've got to get this off of Schedule 1. We've got to get the government out of the pocket of the states so that the states can start doing proper studies and find wh better ways to make this plant work for us, not ways to hide it. Next story, again, not a lot of tokes today. Weedless, so it's going a lot faster. And I'm pushing it a bit because I have a lot of anxiety. My back really hurts. Don't know when my son's going to walk through the door with groceries and get the dog barking. And... While I do this, Pasha's watching YouTube. So, next one is from NewYorkTimes.com, NYTimes.com. And it's about, and the next two stories are related. It's about, uh, sorry, how much is too much marijuana to drive? 
And this story goes on. I'm just going to read a part of it. And I encourage you to read both of these because I've always stood forth that there is impaired driving with marijuana, but it's so much different from alcohol. And it's at very specific times during a high. That's my feelings. One day I'll do a, a video on it. Quoting this story, as a result, the presence of THC in blood is not a useful indicator of whether the drug is impairing that person's ability to drive. Furthermore, the study said the practical reality of identifying, evaluating, arresting, and sampling suspected impaired drivers means that the THC concentrated concentration measured in the blood specimen reflects neither the concentration in the subject blood at the time of the rest, nor the concentration of the active drug in the brain. So the active drug in the brain is not necessarily in any correlation to the amount of THC in the blood. I, a user who has very high tolerance, who takes it every single day, all day, will have high THC in the blood, but I may have gone six, eight, ten hours without having any THC up here. That's one part of it. The other part of it is they pull you over. By the time they can withdraw that blood, it could be two hours later. You're no longer impaired, but it could still show you are. You know, it's not trustworthy. It doesn't provide the information needed to make the arrests that are being made. And that ties to the very next story by the cannabis who says the same thing, that driving high, legal limits have no scientific basis. I will quote something here. In addition, frequent marijuana users can exhibit pers persistent levels of the drug long after use, while THC levels can decline more rapidly among occasional users. So mine stays longer. Nine states, including some that have legalized marijuana for medical use, have zero tolerance laws for driving and marijuana that make not only the presence of THC in the driver's blood illegal, but also the presence of its metabolites, which can linger for weeks after use. So you could even lose your license for having smoked two weeks ago. This doesn't make sense. They haven't even proved that you are impaired, just that you're high. I'm only 20... 18 minutes in, and I'm finished Weedy Weekend because I was a bit too fast, a bit too chatty. <sighs> Just been a tough day. I want to give a shout out to all of you. We are at over 1,000 subscribers. That is wonderful for me. That is wonderful for you. That is wonderful for the Weed Tube family. We are a great group of people that really love each other and send out warm hugs all over the place. So, Happy Weedy Weekend 55. Stay alive. Peace. Cheers. Love and harmony.